When I first read the article about Nasarima, I was shocked reading about some of the rituals and traditions that they perform. To start with, the fact that it is stated that they believe there are many charms and magical potions with which no native believes that he or she could live without is shocking to me when I first read it. In a traditional American culture, I suppose you can compare these magic potions to medicines such as antibiotics or Tylenol. However, knowing how harming some of their solutions and rituals are is truly horrifying to even read about, let alone imagine. For example, the one where an owl is jabbed into an exposed nerve of the person and is being performed on seems absolutely excruciating. It makes it sound like there is more harm than good being done. However, these people have no idea that their rituals are not good for them because they haven't learned any other way. This can be depicted in American culture because we have learned some things such as our core beliefs and we do not let other people tell us why or why not they are reasonable. For instance, some people like the way traditional schooling works, while other people want to learn about real life scenarios such as taxes and how to invest in the stock market. Brainwashing can also easily be achieved for them, such as it can be for a traditional American culture by imposing fear tactics on people who have different beliefs or values. Another example tied to an American culture could be the more powerful the individuals are, they have several shrines in their house, often referred to the number of rituals they have done in Nasarima. For Americans, we can take these as people who are rich or have a heavy influence on the public. Therefore, we idolize them, such as the Nasarima's less fortunate people idolize these people because we see that they've become successful, so much so that we tend to copy their models, such as how they eat, how they dress, versus even how they structured their entire business. Football is my topic, and even though it is normal for Americans to watch football every Sunday, an outsider's mind might explode if they saw it. An outside observer enters into the vicinity of a football game, and the first thing they see is a massive size stadium with a ton of cars and a huge parking lot with people cooking and going crazy in it. As they walk by, they will ask what's going on, and somebody will answer. This is called a tailgate. It happens in a parking lot before every professional game, and it is time for fans to meet up, cook, and get to know each other. They even start to drink and go a little crazy sometimes. Then, the outsider will walk up to the doors only to find a very long line of people waiting to get inside. They will be told to wait at the end, and when they finally get to the gates, they will be asked for a ticket. Questioning what that is, the guard will tell them it is a piece of paper or electronic barcode that basically gives them access into the stadium for that particular game. Once they get to their seat and the game starts, a million questions will come into their head. Probably starting with, why is the ball shaped like that? Or why are there numbers and big yellow posts on each side of the field? The ball has always been that shape, and it's due to the tradition and ability to make it be thrown far. The lines are yard markers to track a player's distance gone, and the goal lines are where the players cross to score six points, also known as a touchdown. The big yellow posts are where field goals worth three points and extra points worth one point is kicked. The next question being asked is why are they tackling each other? The answer is the defensive player tackles the offensive player in order to stop him from scoring. Another common question would be how do they keep getting chances to score and the answer would be from getting 10 yards at a time in 3 to 4 tries also known as downs to keep a possession going. A scoreboard's quarters and times would also be brought up and the outsider would find out that there are 4 quarters with 12 minutes each and whoever has the most points after that wins. Why are the guys in striped shirts throwing a yellow thing? The outsider asks after a penalty on the defense is assessed. Those are refs and the yellow thing being thrown is called a flag, which is thrown after either team commits a rule violation. The fans are going absolutely nuts at this time and the outsider asks what their deal is. Well, their team is up by over three scores in the fourth quarter and therefore they will most likely win. This is a huge part in American culture, as innocent as it sounds for people who enjoy watching the game and to celebrate a victory by their team. Football was invented on November 6, 1869 when the colleges Princeton and Rutgers were in New Jersey and decided to change the rules of soccer. The explanation for the change that the sport was going to be a hybrid for rugby and soccer, both very popular sports back then. Eventually, the traditional rugby scrum was given up and replaced for giving up the ball if yardage wasn't gained, now more commonly known as downs. 
The formatting of having 11 players on the field was implemented, and the idea of the quarterback was inserted at the same time, around 1888. The NFL was established in, on September 20th, 1920 in Canton, Ohio, and has been the main professional league ever since. At first, they had 14 teams. However, the popularity began to spike immensely, and in 1970, the NFL and American Football League, AFL, merged, creating the league we know today. Several other changes, such as evolving from using real pig skin back in the day to waterproof leather for a ball now, expanding to 32 teams from the original 14, or even making player safety more of a priority with the evolution of helmets and pads, football has come a long way from when it was first invented and is a staple in American culture. Most people would probably not even know that it was a hybrid of soccer and rugby to start. These changes are very beneficial to U.S. culture because it gives the U.S. their own popular sport that everybody in the country can identify to and knows about, uh, unless they've been living under a rock. For example, soccer was popular when football originated, but it was actually established in England in the 12th century. Giving football to Americans with all of the evolutions and traditions that were created and implemented around it is absolutely vital for the culture and the rapid growth of the sport. Um, this quote from showallegiance.com states, quote, Unanimously across the nation, football is seen as the most superior sport to them all. Not only does the United States possess the National Football League, NFL, but also has a professional type following to collegiate football as well, with the most impressive youth programs for the sport that can be found in the entire world. Quote, Football is important for American culture because it gives something for kids to do at a very young age and is also constantly tweaked or improved, often going hand in hand with the society of America.